Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the KPI ticker by MAQ Software. Now, the KPI ticker is really just kind of a convenient way to look at high-level metrics. And you're going to be able to see a single value, but across multiple values. So the obvious scenario where you might use this would be something like a stock market kind of indicator, but you can use it well beyond that as well. Any kind of indicator that frequently changes and you want to see scrolled through on your dashboard, you can use the KPI ticker to be able to visualize them. Now, the KPI ticker does include a trend indicator that allows you to see either increases or decreases at a glance of your values. So if you look at the screenshot on the right-hand side, this one's been configured a little oddly. Uh, this is actually a screenshot from the sample that was provided, but it looks like it's showing negative numbers as actually an increase. So perhaps a negative can actually be an increase for you, and you would want to highlight that with inside of your dashboard. Now you can control those little indicators. That trend indicator is something that you can control by the nature of the data inside of your data model. If it's a negative one value for your trend column, it'll return back as a decrease or a red, at least by default. If it's a positive one value, it'll show back as a increase. And then if it's a zero, it'll show it as basically no change at all. Now again, this one is developed by MAQ Software. Let's go ahead and walk you through how you can use the KPI ticker in an example that I have set up for you. All right, so in this example, I actually will be using some US stock data. So I'm gonna go up to the Get Data section to pull that information in from the Excel spreadsheet that I have. So I'll select Get Data and choose Excel. And we're gonna be choosing one here called Stock Prices Trends, or, yeah, right here, and I'll hit Open. And this is going to launch open in my navigator pane where I can choose the spreadsheet with inside of that workbook that I want to use. In this case, I only have one called available stocks. And I can see some information about each of those stocks here. You'll also see in the very last column, we have a trend. And that trend is either a negative one, a zero, or a one. In this case, all of mine are either a negative one or a one. So I don't have any that had no change at all. All right, so I'll go ahead and hit load to bring this now into my data model. And by bringing this into my data model, you can see the fields that are made available to me in the field list. And then my next step, of course, is to bring in the custom visual that we want to use for this example. So I'm going to go up to the custom visual section up top and select from marketplace. And here I'll search for the KPI indicator, or the KPI ticker, I should say. And you'll find very easily the KPI ticker by MAQ Software. And then we'll select Add. That'll add it to our visualization pane over on the right-hand side, and we can go ahead and hit OK to start to use this one. So I can go ahead and select the KPI ticker. Let's make this take up the width of our screen here. And then inside the KPI ticker, we can put whatever we want the KPI name to be. So these are basically going to be category values that we have. In our case, this would be the name of the stocks that we're focused in on. Then I'll bring in the current value. So I have one here labeled current. I have one here labeled last value. And then I can also bring one in here where it says the KPI status. That'll be my trend value here. That'd be my one, negative one, or zero. So I can see it brought back here. It's bringing back some results that we can look at. Of course, this is rather small, so you can actually play, play around with this some and increase this, the size of them, by going underneath the format paintbrush section. So if I go over to the format section here, I can go underneath the configuration area, and I can tell it how many KPIs I want to see per kind of ticker slide. So if you want to, you maybe you only want to see two values shown at a time, you can flip that to two. Or if you like the count of four, you can use four. You can also add in here the option here where you can actually enable the delta. So it'll, it'll show you in a parentheses the change of the values, which we're showing here anyway. So no need to turn that on. I'm going to leave that off. Now you'll notice that the font size here is rather small for these examples. So you can bump up the font size here a little bit by changing the size up to at least 40 and that'll increase the size of the text being used in each of the values here. You can also change the color. So if you don't like the blue color that's being used, maybe you prefer more of a pure black, so it's a little easier to read. You can do that here as well. And then you can alternatively also change the background color. So right now it's using this kind of off gray color, but you could make it more of a pure white, so it uh, blends in more with your design surface. So now that it looks like it's just part of my canvas here. I'm going to revert that back. Just wanted to show you that that's possible, that you can change that. Lastly, here under the indicators section, you can actually change the color of the indicators that are being used. So right now, a positive indicator, which is a positive one under my trend value, returns back a green indicator that's trending up. A negative one returns back a zero. And if I had any zeros on my actual trend line, if I had any zeros, that would return back a neutral or a blue. So again, zero is neutral, negative one is negative, and then positive is plus one. 
So you can change those values here if you needed to for whatever reason. Maybe I want to change this from a green to maybe a blue. You can kind of play around with that some if you wanted to. But I think I'm going to revert that back to the default. I think the green, red, and blue make perfect sense here. Now that's really it for this indicator. This is a pretty simple visual to work with. Of course, you do have the standard settings that you have in just about any one of your other visuals available here as well. One little small thing I found that was kind of odd was when you're working with these, you'll notice some of the formatting on these is a little odd. I thought that, you know, maybe I can just change the formatting on these by going underneath and finding my current value here. And if I select the current value, I thought for sure if I changed it in the modeling ribbon here to be formatted as a decimal and the decimal with two places, it looks like that's already taken care of here. I thought that would actually update that here, but it looks like the, the uh, visual here is uh, kind of picking up its own formatting that I could probably fix by going back to the query editor and uh, kind of rolling up those decimal places up to a higher point. Not super critical for what we're doing, but I uh, just wanted to point that out. That's kind of an oddity that you probably noticed as I was doing this one. Outside of that, though, that's really it for this visual. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Nice little simple visual here to show you guys. And I look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot.